Understanding centrifugal pump curves. A typical composite curve includes the pump performance curves or horsepower curves and NPSH required, which is the net positive suction head. A pump performance curve indicates how a pump will perform in regards to pressure head and flow. A curve is defined for a specific operating speed and a specific inlet outlet diameter. In our example here, these curves show the performance at 1200 RPM for a 6 by 4 inches inlet outlet diameters. Several curves on one chart indicate the performance for various impeller diameters. In the example here, the impeller size ranges from 8 inches to 10.19 inches. These curves also tell us the possible conditions that the pump could be modified to meet in the future by installing a different impeller size. Now to read these curves, flow is indicated on the x-axis while head is indicated on the y-axis. In this example, let's say if you are pumping against a head of 24 feet using an impeller size of 9 inches, we could pump at a rate of 480 US GPM. Changing the motor speed gives us different performance curves. Let's see what happens to these curves if we selected a motor at 3600 RPM. From the first look on the chart, you can see that flow and head increased. Actually, we can predict these numbers and draw this chart using the below pump affinity laws. where subscripts 1 and 2 denote the value before and after the change. P is the power, N the speed, D the impeller diameter, and H the head. If the impeller diameter is fixed, the affinity law become like this. So in our case, increasing the speed three times from 1200 to 3600 means the flow on the x-axis should be multiplied by three. The head on the y-axis is increased by three square, so should be multiplied by nine. And the power curves should be multiplied by three cube or 27. These curves also shows us the shutoff head, which is the head the pump would generate if operating against a closed valve. In our example here, the shutoff for 9 inches impeller is approximately 34 feet. Also, these efficiency curves are provided on the pump performance curve. These efficiency curves are labeled in percentages. Now some curves will also mark the best efficiency point. This is the point on a pump's performance curves that corresponds to the highest efficiency and is usually between 80 to 85 percent of the shutoff head. At the best efficiency point, the impeller is subjected to minimum radial force promoting a smooth operation with low vibration and noise. Pump runs best at or near best efficiency point. Operating your pump outside of the recommended range will most likely shorten the pump life. A guideline is to locate the operating point between 110% and 80% of the best efficiency point flow rate. The brake horsepower curves indicate the horsepower required to operate a pump at a given point on the performance curve. In our example here, for the 9 inch impeller size and for 24 feet head and 480 US GPM flow, the required horsepower is 
five fourths power. We have to go for the line above the performance curve. So it's five fourths power in our case here. It is common practice to size the motor for the end of curve horsepower requirements. In the example shown here, even though 2 horsepower is required for a flow of 140 GPM with 40 feet head, the end of curve horsepower requires a 2.5 horsepower motor to be used. Now, the third important part of the pump curve is the net positive suction head required curve. And this curve provides information about the suction characteristics of the pump at different flows. The net positive suction head required gives you an indication for the minimum suction head that should be available by the pump at a certain flow to avoid cavitation issues that would be damaging to the pump and would have a negative impact on overall pump performance. To better understand it, let's see this example here. Let's consider this head as the pump and PSH required. H1, the NPSH available max which is the head corresponding to the maximum water level and H2 is the NPSH available minimum which is the head corresponding to the minimum water level now to be in the safe side at least we have to keep a margin of 0.5 meters between H2 and the NPSH required looking back at our design example flow of 480 GPM seven feet of net positive suction head required at that condition so you have to make sure that your suction head is greater than seven feet to avoid cavitation please subscribe to stay updated with our future videos and keep a comment downside in case you have any questions